She runs. Well, welcome back to another episode of My Junk and Stuff Garage. I know it's been a while. Life gets in the way, I guess. Got a cool little little episode for you here today. Um, about a month ago, I was fortunate enough to uh, spot a nice little ad for some uh, old line L for sale uh, locally, like 10 minutes from my house. And uh, it was kind of one of those things where when you see it, you better jump on it if you want it. And so, yep, counted my coins, called the guy up, and real nice guy. Uh, and and went and looked at it, and, and what it was was a bunch of bunch of post-war uh, Lionel, and I think what it what it started out as was the uh, the guy's grandfather's started out with one set, and then you know the typical thing birthdays, Christmas, and, and all that, and you add stuff, and uh, got some pretty neat little stuff, uh, kind of like this and that, and so. Well, let's get to it. Well, here we go. Taking out of the out of the boxes here. Awful lot of stuff. 3464, 6250, 6457, 2046 tender, 2331 Virginia train master, 2333 AA units. 56 to go with the 2046 tender. A nice little lube set. A gang car. <laughs> Big box. 2533, 2531, 2532, 24, one, two, three. I kill myself here. 3469X Hopper. So I think X means it would have been the one that came in a set, one of the sets. 2555. And down here we got a box that's got, well, a beacon, a tunnel, 310 billboard set. 252 UCS track and marks 416 floodlight tower. Oh, that's a nice chrome there. A 154 and another floodlight tower. Oh, that one looks good too. Here's a little guy. I don't know where he came from. Have to figure that out. And then a 153. <laughs> and a 45 end gateman. I see the green bottom. I keep piling stuff around in here. That was happened to be a KW transformer. And a flyer 591. 755. Uh, might be a 755A. Talking stuff in the box. So I didn't go to York. Oh yeah, I forgot. And this Colber floodlight, or not floodlight tower, but uh, that was good. So, and there's a, a box of track um, as big as these um, as well. So, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't go to York, but uh, this is what we ended up with. So here, I'll open some of this stuff up. Well, here are the 24, 21, 2, and 3. So these are the silver with the gray roof variation. Um, I guess they're not perfect. I see a little, a little bit of melty melt there. Probably had a little derail and got hot. But I think all the skirts are there, it looks like. Um, so I mean, they're not, 
like new. I don't know. They're not like new or anything, but they're uh, gee, they're good enough for me. I mean, gosh, got most of the flaps. There was a you see a scratch or two there on that side of that 22. But uh, again, trucks and everything look really nice. Good-looking cars. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Okay. So, so there you have that OPS sticker. So these were. Again, I mean, I was assuming these were separate sale because um, he didn't really have the any total set contents that would match this. And the story was that he started out being his grandpa's. So. I think there was a there's an, there's the correct consist for a for the 1948-2151 whistle set, uh, which had the Santa Fe F3s in it, um, and it looks like everything else is uh, you know kind of one off. So, so there you go. All right, there's the uh, the three aluminum cars. You can see the lettering is a little little light on a couple of them, but. 25, 31, 32, 33. So they're dusty and dirty, but at the bottom of them, they look really good. I think these will, I think these will clean up. Um, again, like I said, pretty, pretty dusty and stuff, but I don't know, maybe a few nicks. I mean, obviously, obviously they've been played with, but. Uh, these will make a nice little, uh, nice little runner set uh, for sure. Uh, they're, I think they're probably better than the set I have uh, currently. And again, I'm pretty sure, based on what all was included with all this, uh, these were purchased, uh, you know, separately, probably, probably for grandpa by grandpa's parents, you know, every year, every other year for Christmas and birthdays and stuff. So. So there you go, we're, we're getting pretty good. We got two, two nice, to me anyway, nice sets of passenger cars. So let's see what's next. All right, let's see what's next. Got a nice little number 50 game car in the box. Uh, uh, I haven't bothered to look up and see which version this is, but looks like the man is uh, black there. No, so, uh, he might've had a painted face and painted hands. Um, looks like the bumper rubbers are blue and looks like they the uh, arm for the bumpers uh, ducks down so you guys can figure out the version probably well before me so anyway so there you go nice little gang car oh yeah and this one was purchased at purchased at the LS Airs Co in Indianapolis and let's see There is the original receipt for it, $7.95 for the Lionel Gang car, purchased on 12 2 doesn't say what year. That is so cool, so, so cool. All right, next we got a 2056 with a 2046 tender. Nice boxes, all right, looky there, nice boxes. I will say every one of these boxes has all of its inserts, like not just part of them, but all of them. You know, I got some flaps that are starting to get torn, but but pretty good. So we've got our steps. This version with, uh, I guess, the openings for the lights looks like for the backup lights that uh, were never used. Um, I don't see any cracks. Again, both steps. Here's the only defect I see. Again, looks like. Looks like we had a little derailment and got a little hot on the track there, shorted. Um, so, so that's, uh, you know, it's only, what, 70 years old? All right, so here is the 202056 Magna Traction. Cow catcher's not broken off. We still have both marker lights, although one of the jewels is missing. Uh, clearly the smoke unit was working. Um, 
there's a there was a shoe box that had a bunch of stuff including the smoke pellets and stuff like that in it. So she's looking pretty good. Man, this is I I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't really looking for a bunch of post-war. I've, I've, I've got a good bit of post-war anyway, but I, I wasn't on the hunt for any. But uh, this this stuff just popped up about 10 minutes from my house. Um, so I got a hold of the guy and said, hey, and here you see it. So, and here's the last uh, nice little piece here. It's so 2331 Virginian Train Master. So this is the gray plastic shell with black painted, black and yellow, both colors painted, uh, stripes with the FM decals and so forth. And I mean, it's a little, see there's a little bit of dirt and debris on the run, running boards and the, the grab irons and stuff. You can see that there. Looks like the frame's a little tweaked. Um, it's like, oh, well, that's not very good focus. I oh, can't tell if that's a screw crack or not. We'll be very gentle with this poor fella. That one doesn't look like it's got a crack. And I did open this up. That looks as new as new can be, practically. So there's no, no battery damage there. So this is the, uh, well, obviously not the, the super rare train masters, but not the, not the common Lackawanna ones either. So. Well, I probably said that wrong, so I'll apologize, but there you go. Um, here's the funny thing. I've been playing with these trains for 50 years. This is the first train master to grace my hands in all that time. I've had most everything else. I guess I haven't had a 700E, but uh, it's kind of funny. I even have a the ultra rare 2347 uh, Chesapeake and Ohio GP7, GP9. Uh, but I, I haven't had one train master, not any of the road names. So that was probably the other reason I was so excited to make this uh, good deal. Okay, so there you go. So so we're moving on. We got two sets of passenger cars and a couple of nice engines and a gang car. So it's moving on. All right, and there you have it. What I believe was what uh, the, the seller's... Uh, grandpa started out with which I think would have been a 1948 2151 whistle set uh, 2333 uh, Santa Fe F3 F3s uh, 6055 tank car although this one's a 2555 on the box uh, and it is it is actually 2555 there's a sticker so that's interesting so Maybe a little bit of transition there, using up leftover stuff. Um, 3469X. Okay. And the 20 or 6520. Um, now, interestingly, looks like these all have stapling trucks. Um, I'm not a big post war expert, but uh, I think I don't know what the timeline was from the transition from the early green generators to whatever tan and whatever the other colors were so I don't know if it actually would be correct for a 48 set to have an orange generator I guess you guys can tell me uh, 3464 uh, operating car with with the steps bar in trucks nice 6457 caboose and notice that's I believe the painted plastic stack None of the corners are chipped. None of the steps are chipped. So I'm happy about that. And that's probably all because she spent her life in that box. So that's, boxes are a good thing. Um, here, looking at the bottom of this powered unit. Gosh, I don't know if you can see, but that looks pretty much brand new in there. So no batteries ever graced that. Looks like all the right stuff is where it's supposed to be. Missing a few portholes and some goofy things like that. Nothing that I can't deal with. I'm not sure it's a little little mark there. I don't know if that's a glue mark or what. So these are the, I don't, again, I'm not up on the chronology of the portholes, but these are 
seem to really curve out like that. Whatever size decal, I think, is that the large decal? Um, so I'm sure a lot of you guys can tell me more about these than, than I know. But anyway, so that's it for the trains. There was actually one more car. It was an oddball. <laughs> didn't match anything, a, a 6424 flat car, I think, with missing the automobiles, and I don't think I've, I haven't found the automobiles in any of the boxes. They're not in the shoe box with the parts, so, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, like I say, I didn't go to York, and I was, wasn't looking for this stuff, uh, but it found me. I guess that's the way it is with all of us train nuts, so. Anyway, there you go. All right, let's see. I've taken the uh, 2333 Santa Fe F3s and just tossed them right on the track. Will they run? I haven't done anything to them. Nothing at all. <laughs> all I did was try and make sure I got all the wheels on the track. Oh, looks like we got lights. We got an E-unit buzz. Oh my Lord. That is spectacular. All right, let's see if any of the other two engines run. All right, here's the 2056. Straight out of the boxes and onto the table. Let's see, let's see if it'll work. Oh, oh, wait a minute, I think I saw the unit. It was uh, tweaked in the wrong direction. Okay, let's see now. Oh, a little squeaky, but she's, oh, she's functional. Whistle wants to, not quite. So she needs some service. She needs some service, but she does run. Two for two. Let's see if the gang car works. Oh, <laughs> I expected that to work. Uh, let's see. Let's see, I expected that to work. Oh, it does work, okay. Let's just not had it done all the way bad contact or something okay three for three all right now for the save the best for last 2331 with the black stripe painted stripe see if she runs she wants to oh look at that come on baby ah, who needs to go in reverse oh oh I'm calling that a run. I mean, you saw it run, right? <laughs> it ran when I took it out of the box and put it on the track. It needs some service, but it's a runner. You know what that makes us? Four out of four. How do you like that? Sweet. What a haul. Who says you got to go to York? This stuff was 15 minutes from my house. Bought from the original owner's family. I mean, you, you can't ask for any better than that. Right on.
So I'll probably still go through it at some point, but so I'm kind of curious though. All I did was use a little bit of Dawn, but I've got a got a bunch of white uh, white stuff here. Don't want to go too crazy on it. I'm wondering if that if you guys think that could be uh, wax from a previous owner trying to clean stuff up or what there. Now probably uh, probably the right thing to do would be to pull these uh, side rails off and clean that a little better and then maybe polish them up although we can see and both sides are like this on the long rail uh, there's a little bit of flaking and well the shell's on but uh, it looked like there were some gouge marks on the inside of the shell where it looks like those have been taken off before so either way So I guess that's about it. Um, I think I think what I'd like to do, um, you know, I didn't. I could have spent two hours like going through everything. I guess um, I didn't show you all any deep cleaning or anything like that. Um, I did have to take the F3 apart and and uh, go through and clean out some dirty grease and some oil, clean the brush plates and all that type of stuff. And I had to do the same thing on the on the train master. Um, and actually, it looked like he had. Uh, somebody who serviced it before put the incorrect uh, style brushes in the motors on the train master so i think that was causing me a little bit of problems with the reverse and so forth so kind of got that sorted out but kind of what i'm thinking about doing and i don't know it'd be a real might be kind of a pain to do this but what i really like to do is i like to take everything that the guy had you know from his uh, the, the, the whole set of stuff the three engines the gang car all the uh, the freight cars, the passenger cars, and the track uh, ended up with two pairs of switches and um, 10 curves and a bunch of straights. So not enough to make three loops. We could make two loops with some uh, switch sidings and so forth, which is kind of interesting. And I guess what I'd like to do is maybe set that stuff up by itself on the floor like, you know, like his grandpa or, or, or dad would have done 50, 60 years ago or something like that. And then, you know, make a little video of running all those trains just the ones that that they had you know separate from anything else um, i think that that might be kind of a neat little video so i guess stay tuned stand by see if i can make that happen all right thanks for watching and enjoy